Victoria's a bit like one of those reviews that gives the game away before you uh, <laughs> um, Looking around, I, I was right in thinking beforehand that there'd be a lot of people here who know a lot more about this than I do. And talking to Leo, I've never met Ruth. Um, so uh, this is about memory today, and, and I don't have the sort of memory that so many people have about this. Mine, mine is a different kind of memory. And I was talking to Leo in, in Cape Town, and, we, came, and we, sort of, we bounced a few ideas around. And then I realized that there's a story that I can tell that probably hasn't been told before. Um, and the context of that story, just let me start the historical bit, I mean, you know, from when Ruth joined the city council in, in, in uh, Johannesburg and soon left in disgust and became a journalist uh, in 1946 uh, during the minor strike. And, and when she left the country, it was thrown out of the country really uh, in 63. Um, uh, it was an incredibly volatile time in South Africa. The, um, the Nazi-leaning government was rechanneling old legislation like the 1930 Land Act and consolidating it into um, uh, legislation that was separating people by race. Uh, there was the Suppression of Communism Act, the Blue Barriers Act, the 90 days, the treason trial, the Ukrainian trial, uh, and, and the banning of the ANC. The opposition um, was, uh, and, and Ruth was central, so central to this, um, was the mine workers strike, the defiance campaign, the Congress, the people, the creating of the Freedom Charter, um, and defiance, uh, and eventually in Conto, and um, uh, eventually, uh, and Shadfor really was a resistance as well as uh, an attempt by the state. Now that's the context, and that's the context that many people know about South Africa. Um, now, what I want to really talk about briefly is rather the ideological relationship, um, as Victoria said, between the uh, 1950s and the 1980s, because that is what I provided with uh, 30 years later. Um, there, just, to, just to step back a moment, uh, there are liminal moments in, 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 the, in the life of a state when what happens after that moment is utterly different to what happened before. Nothing is ever the same, and you are having to learn things anew. One of those moments happened in 1981, I think, and it was uh, during an anti-South African Indian Council campaign. Uh, I walked into a hall in Athlone. The Freedom Charter was, uh, in huge letters, was around the wall, the banned Freedom Charter at the time. An ANC flag fell down behind the speaker as he started speaking. And um, what really happened, I don't remember exactly what was being said even, but what we all knew as we walked out that hall was that the Congress Alliance had been reborn in the 1980s. The reason it was so exciting is that there had been resistance through the 70s and the school kids, uh, was, there was Soweto, there was a council committee of 18 years, but there was no focus, there was no real, where are we going as a field? Suddenly there was a direction and it was the Congress movement. And I, being a historian, didn't help me because I really, my period wasn't the 1950s. Um, so I scrambled to find out what was going on. And at the time I was teaching journalism at Rhodes. And um, the, the, I dug into the 1950s and I was um, struggling because I was being expected to be, because I was the journalist, and because I was in the movement, I was expected to come up with a way of being a journalist on the left in the opposition <coughs> situation. And I didn't know how to do it. Because I'd come up in the commercial press, um, I you know, had to be objective. How was I going to be mobilizing? And it, 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 was, a, it was a puzzle I was having. Um, and then in, in 1982, Ruth was assassinated. And, and I really hardly knew who she was. Um, everything that she had written had been banned in South Africa. And I, I, even without Google, I managed to find stuff, and particularly 117 days of gutted. Um, now, the way she wrote was, was just suddenly it made what I was trying to do sensible. Uh, she was, um, I kind of went, that's it, that's, that's what I really need. Um, and she worked out the relationship between factual reporting and mobilization. Um, and, um, you know, I was a, a, a sort of trying to be a theorist as well as a journalist and trying to find out what she's doing. Um, and it's what I came to call inside the journalist. She was building an alternative consensus. Um, she was looking for the contradictions, as, as Alvin would say, um, in her journalism. And she was asking questions into a different paradigm. And that's what was so mobilizing. She wasn't working within the paradigm of the, of the, of the state. 
Um, and uh, so she became increasingly, as I was reading about her, and I was doing the business of being an oppositional journalist in the 1980s, and then increasingly she became my guide. Um, and uh, the UDF was formed, uh, uh, and uh, it was really a new Congress alliance. Uh, I think something rather to the surprise of the ANC um, at the time. And strange parallels started to happen because, obviously, in a way, the UDF was rechanneling the Congress alliance, and Ruth was so central to that. You know, our our goal, our standard was the Freedom Charter. And when I started digging, I discovered that Ruth was part of the a committee that took all the bits of paper and put it together. She was the journalist who was given the job of assembling and making sense out of the Freedom Charter. Um, and um, it continued, you know, there were marches, there were funerals, and I was reading about the, the Alexander boycotts, where Ruth suddenly came, suddenly came to a new understanding, I think, about what popular uprising from below, unorganized seemingly, uh, the power of that. Um, uh, and, and we were working in the Eastern Cape trying to prevent people from being thrown off the land, and we were getting into terrible trouble with farmers, and I was reading about the, the Bethel uh, potato uh, uh, investigations that Ruth did, uh, about people who were uh, the pass, uh, people who were, were picked up on pass offences, sent off to be uh, workers in terrible conditions on the farm, which led to the potato boy. Um, and then, of course, the state uh, didn't like our newspapers, and we were getting into a lot of trouble. Um, and it's all about language, the debate and discussion was uh, between the state and us and the lawyers we were employing. It was about the use of language. And I came upon the treason trial. And the treason trial was precisely a long trial. Uh, 156 people were um, arrested, and, and the trial was about what is the meaning of violence and communism and, and, and treason. Um, and I'm reading that, and I'm trying to deal with what the state is doing. It's the same thing. Here we are again. Um, and, um, you know, there were secret meetings, and I'm reading about 170, in 117 days. So those parallels are already happening, but it wasn't happening only to me, because um, I was teaching a lot of students at the time. So I was taking Ruth's understandings and ideas and teaching them. I got into a lot of trouble at the university. They delayed my tenure, but I mean, I, they still went out there. So a lot of the way in which I was teaching, I was teaching Ruth first in the 1980s, which wasn't really, I wasn't telling anybody that, but I was using her stuff increasingly. Um, and um, one of the most harrowing moments I remember was that I was in hiding, um, and I was expecting a knock on the door. Um, uh, that the security police would find me, and, and I was reading 117 days. Uh, don't ever try that. Uh, it's just an arrow thing you can ever do. Um, and um, one of my problems um, it was that I, I was writing a, a, a sort of a, a journalistic or partial biography of Ruth, and the danger was that uh, I was trying not to identify with Ruth. But Ruth's struggle was taking over my life in that I was, in my, in my day job, was virtually rerunning um, uh, what she and so many of her comrades had started. Um, we were making history like she was while um, actually reporting it. And that's a very interesting position for a journalist to be in. Because what we were putting out and what she was putting out was changing the way people acted um, and creating an opposition. Um, and really, that, I just wanted to signal that I don't think uh, it's well known uh, just how influential Ruth became in the creation of young journalists uh, in the 1980s, not only through me, but because I was going, you've got to read Ruth first, have you seen, seen this? And so it was getting out within the UDF. Um, and just how um, important her work was, uh, which is not well known. Um, and uh, I was standing in uh, uh, um, an, an election queue in 1994, and I really, really wished that she could have been there. Um, now, one of the things that also um, has carried forward and long beyond the, the 1980s uh, was the, the more intellectual stuff, not just the television <coughs> that, 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 um, <coughs> that, that she, was, she was doing. And, and one of them, a fantastic book on that. It's on the, uh, you can get it on the, the website, Barrel of a Gun. And um, I rewrote, read uh, a piece of it recently, and I'll, I'll quote this piece. 
uh, from it. Uh, power in Africa was transferred, though virtually unchanged, through institutions of government to largely hand-picked heirs. These heirs are the new ruling group of Africa, spoiled children of yesterday's colonialism and of today's governments. They organize the loot of whatever national resources exist. Always, always, she understood the contradictions. Thank you. <coughs>